We all use data all the time, but what exactly is data? How do different programs know what to do with our data? How is visualizing data different from other uses of data? And isn't everything inside a computer data in the end? Let's take a look. This is going to be a little series where I look at a few different kinds of data and how we work with them and what it means to visualize them. But first, we need to talk about file formats. You probably know them by their extensions, like JPEG, PNG, GIF for images, MP3 and AAC for music, zip files for compressed data, uh, doc or PDF for documents, and maybe some less common things like STL for 3D models or various extensions used for camera raw files and so on. These file name extensions are all just hints to the operating system that tell it that these aren't just collections of bytes, but that they have a specific structure and that they can be decoded in a particular way. These files have an intent behind them, and what I like to call a primary representation. I actually wrote a, wrote a blog post about this a little while ago, and I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes below. You can look at the file as just data using something called a hex dump. This shows you the numeric value of each byte in the file as a pair of hexadecimal digits. There are two groups of eight bytes here for 16 bytes on each line, and on the far right there, it prints anything it can represent as a printable character. Now, this is not the primary representation. Uh, in fact, this is perhaps the least common way of looking at data, and mostly just used as a debugging tool. But it's interesting to look at different files this way. For example, you can see that many files have file type markers at the beginning. It's usually in the first four bytes. And this is to make sure that you're reading a file of the correct format, and it's not just that somebody changed the extension from an image to a doc file or something like that. So for example, here we have a ping file, which helpfully has these three letters here, P and G, at the beginning. And here's a JPEG that contains the letters JFIF for some reason. And here's a zip archive with the characteristic PK, which goes back to the PK zip program that introduced the format in the late 80s in, uh, on MS-DOS. And then here is an, an STL file that apparently wants to make extra sure that you understand that this is a 3D model or a 3D mesh. But this is not what most people ever do with these images and other files. Instead, we open them in an image viewer or an editor, or we play them back as music, or we interact with them as 3D models, perhaps. That actually makes it difficult to appreciate what these different files even are, because our software just immediately transforms them for us into a form that we can perceive. And technically, any way you make the data perceivable is a visualization. But visualization usually means something more complex than rendering an image onto a screen. And in particular, we typically visualize data that doesn't have a primary representation or where that primary representation is particularly unhelpful, <laughs> like a table in a spreadsheet, or where it's unwieldy, like a huge database. Visualization is where we have to make decisions about how to represent the data. And it's not as obvious as decoding and displaying the contents of an image file as, as pixels that we can just recognize as a picture, but much more complex, and, and uh, there's a lot more variety and flexibility. Some data files and some data sets have more obvious visualizations, Others have more obvious intents and primary representations, and some have both. Everything is data in the end. All the files, all the programs, everything in your computer's memory. And that's interesting, but it's also not very helpful. It's important to know what files or datasets have a particular intent, so the operating system or other software can do useful things with them. And for those datasets where that doesn't exist or where it's not what you want, you can then decide to do something else with them. That's why data and computers are so powerful and versatile and also fun. Data can be manipulated, it can be duplicated, it can be distorted and reinterpreted. The reason computers are so powerful is because we can do all these things with data that we can't do with physical things or information that exists in the analog realm, at least not as easily. And that's what I'll be talking about more in this series. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and click that little notification bell to be notified when I release the next installment. And I hope to see you soon.